In this video, I'm going to be making stone runes out of XPS foam. Then, I'll show you my favorite way of painting brick walls. The first step is to make the bricks. I start off by cutting down XPS foam into 1cm by 1cm long rectangles. I'll be using a hot wire table for this. If you want to follow along and don't have one, I recommend using a sharp utility knife. After cutting out a few long rectangles, I stack them up and cut them down into smaller brick sized rectangles that are approximately 2cm long. I also cut down some of the 1cm rectangles into thinner planks for all my wood pieces. These are going to be approximately 2-3mm to thick. As you can see, the bricks have a sharp geometric look to them and don't look like stone quite yet. Thankfully, since they're made out of foam, they're easy to texture. The most efficient way to do this is toss them in a container full of rocks and shake them around. The more you shake, the more textured they'll become. After shaking, the stones have a more natural edge and the surfaces have become textured, which will become much more evident when we get to the painting stage. I created some half-wide bricks to add some variation to the wall width, so the build isn't as monotonous. Just like the other bricks, these get textured the same way, shaken in a container of rocks. With these two brick sizes, we're ready for building. I'm going to be using my favorite glue to stick all the bricks together, Express Quick Dry Wood Glue. It dries quickly and is extremely strong, but it also provides enough working time to make sure everything is in the right place. I really enjoy building brick by brick like this. The end result is something that looks great, and I find it fun since it reminds me of building with Lego. The build process is pretty straightforward. Placing bricks one by one, making sure they're staggered so their vertical joints line up with the middle of the bricks above it. Here's a quick time lapse of me building the other stone wall. I also created a couple smaller modular walls to be used on top of these ruins when they're not stacked. Next is building the wood floors with the thinner pieces I had cut previously. I use a foam cutting tool with a wand attachment to add wood grain to each plank. This is a time consuming process that I feel is worth it in the end. I first create an underlying frame, which will then be cross-hatched with the planks on top. This will create a sturdy build, similar to something that would be made out of wood in real life. In case you haven't seen it, I've created a video on wood structures for anyone who wants to learn more about this process. After texturing every piece and laying them down, the final floor looks like this. Once the floor is completely dry, I then glue the entire piece into the ruins. Creating the floor as one piece and gluing it in all at once provides the most surface area for the glue to stick to.
I leave the runes to dry in this orientation, so gravity works in my favor. And here's what it looks like with everything together. I'm choosing to leave the runes unglued, since I want to be able to use them both separately or together as a two-story build. Here's a quick view of the foam structures before we get to painting. You can see the large amount of detail that comes through from building with individual pieces. Time for painting. I start off by coating everything in apple barrel black. This adds durability to the build, but it also acts as our shadow color in the end. For the brick colors, I'm using black and a couple of grays. I'm also going to be adding a bit of green throughout to make the colors more interesting. I'm going to be painting each brick one by one. The technique I'm using is considered overbrushing. I'm applying a coat of paint, but just enough so that the black still shows through underneath. This is where the texture from the rock tumbling becomes really important. One tip for anyone planning on trying this technique, buy a cheap synthetic brush that's the same width as your bricks. This will allow you to paint most bricks in one brush stroke. I continue this process, varying the gray for each brick until I'm done with the wall. And here you can see what the finished stone texture looks like. Next up is wood. For this, I'm base coating all these pieces in melted chocolate by Apple Barrel. After the darker brown has dried, I'm going to dry brush a lighter brown to bring out all the details. For this, I'll be using Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel. A cheap makeup brush works perfectly for this because of the soft bristles. During the dry brushing, I'm making sure to focus on the ends of the wood pieces. This adds dimension and also makes them look weathered. After the stone and wood are painted, these runes are considered done. These smaller end caps are great when the structures are used on their own. Removing them allows for the runes to be stacked into a multi-story building. Keeping your terrain modular provides a bunch of flexibility. And that wraps up this build. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future hobby content. I'll see you guys next time.